Hi, welcome to Freezing Reels 101. I am Christy. And I'm Sharla. And we are doing something super fun today. Well, it's my idea of fun. I don't know if it's other people's idea of fun. <laughs> you can zoom in on my but, face. Like. <laughs> I, I, She's good at it. And okay, it is fun for you. You love saving money. I love you saving love money. You love cooking. You love feeding people. Yeah. And... And I like inventing things and being creative. This really does hit your stride in all those ways. So Charlotte is allowed to find this fun. I am just along for the ride today <laughs> because we're going to let her brain do the work, um, which is most of the time anyway. I, I just show up and look pretty for you. Um, so we are making meals out of things, random things that mm. I found in my pantry. And we're encouraging you yes. to do this as well we're going to be giving you lots of ideas for other recipes yeah. and we're going to put tons of recipe links in the description below so that you can take what you already have in your pantry and make meals with it. There's so many benefits to this. One, those cans and whatever don't have to expire because now they're made into meals and they're in your freezer. So great way to use things that you weren't quite sure how to use. Sometimes, right? Or um, things that you had good intentions with, but you kind of forgot to make those meals and now you're like, why did I buy this can of whatever? Yes. And so that's great. Second reason is we all know grocery prices are going up. Definitely. It's like, I'm hearing it on the news. I'm it's seeing it in actually news articles. like concerning. Yes. It's concerning. I don't know if we've ever seen a grocery inflation quite like this before. Not in not my, my lifetime. Not, not in my lifetime. Or no. not since I've been a mom anyway. Like yeah. Since I've been the one thinking about <laughs> yeah, buying the groceries. Right. And so we wanted to come up. We have videos. I'll plop one right there. Um, of some super budget freezer meals. And freezer meals in general save you a ton of money anyway, but we wanted to come up with another idea where you can spend nothing. Like this is money where you've already spent it. Yeah. And for today's meals, I'm spending zero dollars. We're gonna end up with eight full family meals today and I spent zero dollars. Because you already had it in your pantry. Already had everything. Now, I have, a supersized family, I, there's nine of us, and so I have more in my pantries than the average person. So what I did is I could have actually doubled all these meals and I probably could have made another, in addition to doubling mm -hmm. all these meals, I probably could have made another 10 oh. meals. It's I have, <laughs> I've seen her pantry. I, you're right. Yes. You're right. You believe me. I believe you. Uh, and part of that is because of the supersized family and part of that is because I do freezer meals. Christy and I right. get together once every three months for the last 11 plus years. Yes. And we make meals for both of our families to last those three months. And so as a result of that, we keep our eye open for case lot sales of things that we know that we use often. Right. Absolutely. Um, think, something that's expensive that you don't think of is evaporated milk. Yes. Um, but even a case of mushroom soup has like tripled. And when we find we it started. on sale, we phone each other. And you're like, how, how many cases of soup do you want? <laughs> and you know, those kind of things. It's gonna be a black market for mushroom soup. <laughs> and like our, you know, the beans and corn sure. and all of those things, it, even like salsas and pasta sauces and all of that. So really shut up. We're already, like we're always keeping our eye open. We're already buying like in case lots and things like that. So we do have more um, in our pantries than what the average person might. Right. But you also be, might be like me where you forget if you've bought something already and <laughs> you see it in the store and maybe it's on sale or maybe it's like, oh, I had that on my grocery list a while ago. Did I actually buy it? I better get some. And then right. you get home and you have bought two diced tomatoes <laughs> and you already had six. Oops. Exactly. I am that person. I, I am that person. I. You don't want to know how many sandwich bags I have at my house. Like Costco is dangerous for me. 
So if you're like me, you should do a pantry clean out and make some pantry freezer meals. So there's just so many benefits. Yeah. You're saving money, you're using up things that might have gone to waste, and we don't like waste. We do not like waste. And so you're also cleaning out your pantry, which is like making room in your pantry. And also, if you want to get all woo in your life for like more abundance. Abundance, things, that's right? right. You're making room for more. Manifest it. Yes. You got this. You know, and so. And you are making more, literally. <laughs> literally making more and so we're going to do these pantry meals today using what I had but like I said we're also going to be giving you ideas mm -hmm. for meals that you can make with things that you that are just common to have in your pantry yeah you and okay here's an example though Sharla I bought chickpeas and I don't know what to do with them because I thought I might need them and they were on sale so I bought them how do I know what to do with chickpeas? Well, Christy, uh -huh. <laughs> um, if you don't know, we have a membership club. It's called the Freezer Meals 101 Club. You can type in an ingredient like chickpeas and all of the recipes that would come up just populate that have chickpeas in them. And then you could pick three other, you could pick three of them and say, well, with the other things I have in my pantry, I could use up this can of chickpeas and it's not gone to waste. You do also know chickpeas are, they're like a bean, right? It's a good source of protein. It is. And because today, a there are a lot of vegetarian these, today. A lot of these are meatless. So you could also put in, type in corn and then all of our corn recipes will populate. So I may or may not have done that to figure out some of the meals. Totally. Right? Because it's easy and it just saved me a lot of time and money and all the things. And club members so, will tell you that is a huge bonus of being in the club. Club members, chime in below. Tell us how you've used the club to clean out your pantry. Exactly. Um, or use those like rand I had I found some really random things in my pantry. We're not doing a lot of random today because I wanted to make this universal. And if you're moving. I think there's a lady in our group, you're probably watching, Juliana, she just moved and thinking about moving all of these heavy cans versus making them into freezer meals and then when you get to your new house, you have to move a few frozen meals, but you'll have stuff to throw in your cooker. And while and your you're slow unpacking, cooker, while you're while unpacking you're doing all the, things. the first thing you want to unpack is your instant pot <laughs> or your slow cooker because that is your lifeline until you find dishes like totally <laughs> right yeah so and you don't want to pack all these heavy things go ahead and make them into a meal okay now most of the ones that we're making today are meatless because I'm being serious about this being a pantry challenge like I am I did not go to the store I I didn't go buy meat now there is like the world is like it's limitless what you could make sure if you cleaned out your pantry and went and did a meat order, right? Because then suddenly, but other than one of these, which uses cans of tuna, which I had, yep, these are all meatless because I'm being literal. This is just pantry. So we're, but they are, they are flavorful and you will not miss the meat. Totally, totally. And it's become kind of common practice to people do like a meatless Monday um, just for saving um, money, health. but also health and also environmentally. I know we talked a lot here before we got to the recipes, but you're still with us. Thank you. <laughs> and so we are going to get to our first recipe here, which if you've watched us for a while, you've seen it before and we always have the ingredients we for it. We always have the ingredients for it because we even make it when it's not in our regular rotation. And that is our corn chowder. Because it's the best. Now, this does also have meat in it, but it doesn't have to. So you could omit the bacon, but why would anybody, why would anybody omit, omit the, bacon? the bacon? And I had bacon um, and actually it was already cooked up because my daughter had cooked it up. And you know when you're going to open a whole pack? I always just you tell her. You had leftover bacon? <laughs> yes. That almost never happens at our house. Well, I mean, it does happen, but it is not common. She it's likes like leftover to, wine. What's that? Like, she likes to make herself bacon for breakfast. And by the time she eats her breakfast, like, everyone else has eaten already. And so she's the only one. And so then I'm like, cook up the whole pack. 
put it in the bag and then we can have it for sandwiches and all that kind of yeah. stuff, right? And so there was leftover bacon. And so I just crumbled it and added it into the corn chowder. Nice. So for this corn chowder, when we make it in our mega sessions, we make it in this giant, giant bowl and we like make four, mm -hmm. but we make eight. We make two batches we do, of four. We double it for sure. Yes. And so today we're just making one because I told you I was going to show you how to just use your mini little pantry stash to make meals. So. Yeah. We're gonna use a container to hold open our bag because we're actually gonna throw everything just right in the bag when you're just making one of these. So we're gonna add some chopped onion, a can of kernel corn, or you can use frozen corn if you'd prefer today. We're just using a can. Um, some cream corn, so a can of cream corn, a can of evaporated milk, a can of cream of mushroom soup, two cups of chicken broth, and your cooked and crumbled bacon. Now you wanna add the chicken broth at the end because then, by then, your bag is really soupy and kind of all over the place and that's why you put it in a container to help hold it up. Um, or... Do freezer meals with a friend. And they can help hold it for you. Totally. And if you prefer, you can add the chicken broth at a later date, like if you didn't have any in your pantry or if you wanted to save space in your freezer, you could just put a note on the bag to add two cups of chicken broth before serving. On the day that you make this, you're just going to thaw it and then reheat it on the stovetop or in your slow cooker. It is so good. It's good with biscuits. It's this, I get that from Christy because she makes hers with biscuits. I do, I do. It's my favorite way to eat the cornbread. <laughs> or cornbread, corn chowder. Cornbread also can go with it. It's a little corn overload, but you can do it. You can do cornbread with this one as well. It's also nice with a sandwich station, mm -hmm. like on the weekend. This next recipe that we're gonna make is tuna casserole. And this is like major comfort food for me. It really is, it's easy. You really do have all the things in your pantry. If you have a can of tuna and some mushroom soup, you are golden. Yeah, egg noodles you need. I always make mine with macaroni. Really? Just the thing from growing up, yes, always. Oh, okay. See? It doesn't have to be egg noodles. We've known each other forever, and I'm still learning new things. Me too. Oh, well, <laughs> and I mean, I've made this, obviously, made this tuna casserole with you many times, and you always use the egg noodles, and I just do it because it's fine. But if I am making it at home, I don't really have a recipe. I just, oh, today we have peas, so they're yep. going in there. I always make it with macaroni. That's so funny. Yeah. Okay, so before I get into the recipe, I have to tell you something about, so this one I am using peas, frozen peas, and I have to tell you something about that. So Christy and I are getting ready to do a mega session. By the time you watch this video, we may have done it already, yeah. actually. I don't have the time um, go, but yes. But it, as we get ready for those, we do like an inventory of what's in our freezer and we clean out our freezer and we, you know, and we use up all the freezer meals that are already in there. Yeah. Um, and so Christy was going through my freezer, not that she does my cleaning out for me. Why were you going through my freezer? I was filming here to one day when you were away. Oh yeah, I that's came here true. And I just, I had stuff to film on my own. Sometimes we do overheads diff separately through the magic of TV. <laughs> we bring them to your computer. Yes. Um, and so I was here filming one day and I needed to mix vegetables and I had forgotten mine at home. And so I'm just kind of like like stalking her freezer. Snooping through Snooping. my freezer. There's Snooping. no secrets between no. us. It's fine. I'm not going to find anything <laughs> weird in there um, that I don't already know about. <laughs> That's right. Um, and so I just happened to notice that she had like three different bags of peas that were open and one of them was huge. And I'm like, <laughs> we got to think of something to do with all these peas. So we have a really good creamed corn recipe. And I thought, ooh, we could do a creamed pea. It's I don't know. I, I think it would probably be okay. It's probably not everybody's tastes, but if you were a farm kid with a garden, that first batch of peas off the garden with, with a little bit of like a white sauce with some dill in it, oh, heaven. That sounds really heaven. good. Heaven. So I'm like, maybe that's that something we could good. make into a freezer meal. 
So as I was planning for like the mega marathon, I was thinking of, I was like, oh, chicken fried rice, that has peas. Like that it was peas. just totally. And so this. Oh, well, wait a minute. You could plug it into the club. I could. And then it would generate. It would generate. Yeah. But for the tuna casserole, I knew it had peas. And so right away I was like, oh, I have tuna in my pantry. And like, I know that I have totally. peas. peas are, and I always have an egg noodles because of our beef stroganoff, which Right, we always that one you do serve with egg noodles, right? I do. Okay. <laughs> I I one time I served it check. with bow tie noodles or shells or something because I was actually out before I just wrong. Yeah. I we we ate it and we you survived. survived. Yeah. We survived. Yeah. No, I did make it with different noodles one time, but it was weird. So, for the tuna casserole, you've two options. You can make the whole thing including the pasta, and if you do that, you're going to undercook your egg noodles or macaroni no. slightly. Um, that way when you're reheating, it's not gonna get mushy and overcook. Um, or you can leave the noodles out and you can make just the mixture. And then on the day of, you can cook the noodles, stir the mixture into that and bake it. Now, I almost always make the noodles and make the full thing because not all of my family likes tuna casserole. One of my daughters, my youngest daughter, it's about her favorite meal. Like she mm -hmm. loves this. And for her, it's massive comfort food. So she's had like three surgeries in the past mm -hmm. nine months. And so I always made sure that we had it for her recovery each time and all of that. So for her and for me, I make them in the medium sized bags. So I make a full recipe and then divide it. Right. In the smaller oh, bags. Oh, good idea. Because I know that the rest of our family is not going to eat this. And not so. that often. No. Yeah. Our family will eat it every time. And it's yeah. a bit, and my son, who is not super big into vegetables, will eat it even with the peas. And there's a little bit of onion in it. He'll eat it. Mm -hmm. So for your tuna casserole, you're going to take two cans of tuna that are flaked and drained. And you're going to add some onion, two cups of shredded cheddar cheese so i always have cheese if cheese isn't something that you have then you might have to buy the cheese for this but um, i always have it on hand two cans of cream of mushroom soup one cup of those frozen peas and half a cup of red pepper now i did happen to have a red pepper and so we're using that if i didn't this recipe would survive without it so totally you could just use what you have and then you're gonna mix everything together in a bowl, add your egg noodles if you're adding them now, if not, do it without the egg noodles. And then you're gonna put it into either a large resealable bag or a couple of medium size bags. That's the, um, the medium size ones are the quart ones and the large ones are a gallon. You're gonna take out all of the excess air because when you're freezer cooking, air causes freezer burn and we all hate freezer burn. We don't want that. No. So you're going to freeze it and then on the day that you make this, if you haven't already made your noodles, you're going to cook your noodles. If you cook them this day, you're gonna cook them all the way to right. done and drain them and mix them in. If they're already in there, you're gonna just thaw this, dump the whole thing into a casserole dish and bake it in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes. So a very fast dinner. It is, and it's delicious. It is and delicious. And it hits all the comfort spots, you're right. And this is totally comfort I food. I do like it with red pepper flakes, but <laughs> that's not a surprise because I eat everything with red pepper yeah, flakes. Yeah, you kind of do. <laughs> that's funny. This next one is what we're going to do with those chickpeas. <laughs> and there's so many other things you there can really do with chickpeas. There really are. Do you know that you can freeze hummus? I did not know, but that makes sense, like uh, thinking of all the things that are in it. I have little containers. They're this big. <gasps> so you go and buy the big hummus. hummus? No, I made that. I made homemade hummus. Yeah. And then um, and then you can and you could do it with yeah, sorba. Yeah. And then I freeze them and in a in a large bag all these little and containers the and then the kids can take them for lunches and they can dip you know either pita chips or yeah um pretzels or vegetables that's a great idea i yes i sometimes buy the individual packs at costco and i mean obviously it's more expensive to do it that way 
but my daughter is the only one who takes it for lunches and my son doesn't and so sometimes it takes her a long time to use up that whole batch but if you can freeze it uh, oh that's such a good idea okay we're off on a tangent i'm sorry chickpeas. but we gave you back to the chickpeas we gave you information about freezing hummus so it wasn't totally for it wasn't a waste it wasn't a waste <laughs> but you know, chana masala <laughs> So this is slow cooker chana masala, and it's probably one of the most flavorful ways that you could use the chickpeas. Indian food ha just has tremendous flavor. And maybe it's not everybody's taste, but if you like flavorful things, you will love this. Um, so you want your chickpeas drained and rinsed. Now we're gonna use, that's two cans. Yep. Yeah. We're gonna use both cans here. We're gonna add some chopped onion, some minced garlic, some ginger now we like the squeezy tube ginger um we go through freezer meals we go through it enough with the use of our freezer meals that it is something that we always have in the fridge here and it saves you from having to mince ginger which is kind of a chore sometimes and it's more flavorful than powdered ginger um we're going to add in some thai chilies some now there's some heat there if you are adverse to that much heat you can put in one or half or none um, totally. At our house, we like things much spice or much less spicy than at Charlotte's house. So when we are making our mega session and doing four of them at once, I really will put three in hers, and I'll just put like one or two in mine, and it does make a difference. We're gonna also add in our spices: so cumin, turmeric, garam masala, and then add a can of tomato paste. Luckily, we always have those on hand some lemon juice, and some vegetable broth. Again, there's only two cups here. The bag is still gonna be fairly thin, but if you are running out of room in your freezer, you can save back your vegetable broth for another time. Or if you just didn't have any, you could omit that and add it in on the day of cooking. You want to, on the day of cooking, you wanna thaw this, pour the bag into the slow cooker, cook it on low for four to six hours, let those flavors really meld together, and then you can serve it on rice or with naan or with a few other um, Indian dishes. Like I know that sometimes I'll make this with butter chicken and we'll just have like an yes. Indian feast night with a bunch of different things. Or the paneer curry that the we paneer make is curry. really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Now, handy enough, you probably have rice in your pantry. So then you would also be eating just from your pantry. That's true. <laughs> we have been, I've said this before, um, we are going through a, a rice revolution at our house. Um, sometimes we cook with minute rice. Sometimes it's long grain rice. Sometimes it's converted long grain rice. Do you just, do you know that just means it's parboiled? So it's supposed to cook faster. Uh, right now, and I've had jasmine rice in the past and my husband, kind of got sick of it and he like went on strike from jasmine rice <laughs> so now we have in the house we have the long grain and we have basmati now i don't know if i could get away with feeding them brown rice it just mm, yeah it's it's a thing we, if you like it you like it it's uh, our kids will eat wild rice but well, not brown right the wild rice is kind of exciting yeah i don't know they, why they don't they don't do brown. I mean, no. my kids, your yeah. kids might, and then yay. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, so we, um, I would have options for rice in my pantry if we were doing this totally. out of my pantry. <laughs> so this next one is another soup. And I'm just gonna say in general, like if you're cleaning out your pantry, soup is a great way to go. It really is. You can make so much with soup. And I've talked before about how I make soups with our leftovers. So even if we have like, just one chicken breast left or half a chicken breast, I will cube it really small and stretch it. And make it into something. Make it into a whole soup. Yeah. And I always have chicken broth, beef broth, vegetable broth in my pantry. So I can always throw together a soup. And there's lots of soups like, you know, um, we're actually gonna be doing another soup today, so I'll tell you about that later. But we've got a chicken taco soup that um, oh, I'll put the recipe below. So good. You would need chicken, but everything else is gonna be out of your pantry. Is out of your pantry, totally. And um, you know, we did the corn chowder, but there's so many soups that mm -hmm. you can do. Even just kind of a beef barley, like with the diced tomatoes and the frozen peas, and you know, yeah. all of that stuff. Again, you would need to have beef for that, but a lot of people have 
ground beef in their freezer. So you could add it in or and leftovers like leftover steak chops up nicely, beef strips, whatever. Leftover roasts are perfect. Beef pot pie. Mm. Another one, the mix for it, maybe not the, the pastry for it, but the mix for it, all of it is pantry related. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make a comment about the broth. I have done an experiment at my house. I haven't, we haven't done it yet at, in the freezer meals in general, but there's that better than bouillon. Um, it's like, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was going to be like a, you know, bouillon mix or bouillon cubes. Um, but this is called better than bouillon. It's, you use it with a spoon. It's kind of a gelled texture. Oh, weird. I would have expected it to be a powder. It is not a powder and you keep it in your fridge. Okay. Once you open it, you keep it in your fridge and it lasts for months and months and months. And so I dove in and got the Costco chicken and beef broth oh, bouillon. Wow. And so far I'm a little bit underwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I've learned about it from comments in our videos because people swear by it. And I, so maybe I'm just not using enough. I made chicken gravy with it one night and I was like, Meh. it it was so pasty. So then I went and bought, I went and bought a bottle of kitchen bouquet. I have not bought that in a hundred years. Okay. What is kitchen bouquet? It is gravy darkener. Okay. And it's fermented. So it'd be along the lines of the same process as like soy sauce or Worcestershire sauce. Um, but it does darken it and it gives it a richer flavor. So I added that. And it used to be made in Moose Jaw. Okay, that's Canadian. We are Canadian. And, so. But now it's made in somewhere in Ontario. So I don't it's know what happened Canadian. to the Kitchen Bouquet factory in Moose Jaw. Moose Jaw people, please tell me. Because I, I liked that it was in Moose Jaw. Moose Jaw is just such a fun name for a place. It kind of is. <laughs> so, um, anyway, that's totally an aside. But I have started to venture into it. I, I'm just doing it personally on my own, in my own cooking for now, before I can sing its praises and try, you know, bring it in, because it's a cost savings for sure. It's a space savings because the big tetra packs of the chicken broth and the beef broth can be, you know, they can take up room. Um, but I'm just not sold on the flavor yet. So we'll, uh, we'll continue experimenting before we bring it to the masses. We'll let you know. <laughs> anyway, back so, to the tortilla soup. Back to the tortilla soup. This, I have been making this, it came from a company's coming, which is Jean Paré, who passed away this year. Um, she is a Canadian cookbook author and had a huge series of cookbooks. I'm sure over a hundred. Oh, easily. Yeah. Easily. And they, so this one came from, it's been adapted. So it's very loosely based now, <laughs> but um, a Mexican cookbook from Jean Perret, Company's Coming. And I have been making it since my oldest kids who are young adults now, or not even that young adults, like young adults, young um, adults, were babies. So this is like one of my oldest recipes, this tortilla soup. So easy. You're going to add into your freezer bag half an onion that's diced, some minced garlic. We always have a jar of minced garlic in our fridge, so that's just easy to scoop out and put in there. Half of a red pepper. Now, you may take note that we used the other half of that red pepper in our tuna casserole. That's right. So we've got one red pepper that I happen to have in the fridge anyway, and it has now been made into two separate family size meals. Then we're going to add three cups of salsa. I always have salsa in the house in the bulk sizes because I have some of my sons. Because she salsa. drinks it like water. Yeah. Oh, I don't. It's not I even you? I never use salsa. No. I thought it was you. Never me. It's, it's, it's Jonah, the kids. Mark, Elijah. Yeah. It's the boys no in this house. And there are many boys in this house. Yeah, and they, I didn't know. yeah, they just, I mean, anytime I limit the amount of tortilla chips that come into this house because they're getting expensive and they just will sit and go through an entire bag with a huge thing, a huge bowl of salsa and just, <laughs> oh, you know, that's so funny. So I yes. didn't know. So I always have salsa and then you're going to add two cans of chili style beans. You don't drain those. You just add them with all the liquid two bay leaves, two tablespoons of vegetable powder, some salt and pepper, 
And then it calls for three cups of water, but again, you can add this now, which will make a thicker bag, or you can make a note on the bag to add it on the day of cooking. You're gonna get all your excess air out of the bag, seal it, freeze it on the day you go to make this. You just thaw it, dump it into a pot or slow cooker, and it cooks up really easily. It's just, I mean, there's no meat in there. It's just, a it's just a reheat. Soup. Yeah. And this is so good with some grated um, Monterey Jack or Jalapeno mm -hmm. Jack on top. Mm -hmm. And then some crispy tortilla strips. And oh, it's Sometimes good. I will take an, like a tortilla if it's starting to be stale. Mm -hmm. I will cut it into strips and I have a T-Fal Active Fry, which is kind of the precursor to the common air fryer and has the paddle in it that scoops around constantly. I'm like six or seven minutes in there with these little tortilla strips and you have homemade tortilla strips for your soup. That would be perfect. It would be that's perfect because the right they're size. tiny, tiny. Yeah. And they're not very long and they're, they crisp up really nice. A little bit of oil. Oh yeah. Yeah. And if you want, you can do a little dollop of sour cream on here too. Oh, sprinkle yeah. some green onions if you yes. have some. It is super Make flavorful. It like a taco. And you can really adjust the heat on this one depending on what kind of salsa you use. That's so, true. And other than your red pepper and onion, you didn't do much prep or chopping, um, but you ended up with something that tastes like it has more vegetables because the salsa, everything's all chopped up in yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. No, that's totally true. You're gonna love this one. So this next one is a rice bake that I'm kind of like half inventing, half getting from a recipe I found online, half just using what I have. You know, it's sort of one of those creative things. But we're making two of these because when I found it, I was like, ooh, this might be good enough. Like it sounds good enough mm -hmm. to eventually make it into the club. Oh. But in order to do that, we have to it taste test it. It has to go through the it. test kitchen. And so it has to be her house and my house because we have very different tastes. And it has to pass both tests. And so that's why we're making two of this one. Okay, so for this, you're going to cook some rice. You're going to add that into your freezer bag when it's a little bit cooled already. Um, when you add things that are hot into your freezer bag, they can cause condensation, which can contribute to freezer burn, and we don't want to do that. Totally. And also, then you're putting something warm into your freezer, and your freezer has to work harder, and, you know, so we try to only put things in the freezer once they're cool. Use yesterday's rice. Totally. Use leftover one cup, rice. One cup of dry rice will make three to four four cups of cooked rice. So we are using minute rice, it's about three, little over three cups, but most white rices will be about three cups. Uh, brown rices will make four cups. Ooh. I've been doing rice research re recently. Very good tip. Yeah, so that gives you an idea of how much you can start with versus how much you end with if you need four cups. You know, you need like one and a quarter cup. And for this, we are doubling it and so we're using three cups of dry rice which is going to make a lot like 12 cups yeah because these are going to be big meals yeah we we want to feed your family <laughs> yes we want you to be and this is a this would be a really really great one if you live on your own to make and then divide out totally and you can either put them in containers that can go in the microwave or you can put them in the um, quart size freezer bags. Mm -hmm. So this would be a really good one for that. So you've got your rice in your bag, your cooked rice, and you're gonna add a can of cream of mushroom soup, some frozen peas, because I have lots of frozen peas in my freezer, but if you don't, you could substitute frozen green beans. Um, you could substitute broccoli, frozen or fresh, uh, asparagus that's frozen and chopped up um, or those frozen mixed vegetables yes. there's carrots later on if you have them but if you don't and you have the frozen mixed vegetables you just add a little more and you'll have that covered exactly and that's like great suggestion and then you're going to add some garlic again from the big jar of minced garlic that we have some salt pepper parmesan cheese cheddar cheese 
carrots and diced onion. Now I happened to have carrots. I was making baby food. So I had carrots for the baby food. And so this was one that I did have. But if you didn't have carrots, you can either skip that, replace it with a different vegetable, or like Christy said, use a frozen mix that contains carrots. Totally. And, you know. Now for this, you're going to put some extra shredded cheddar cheese and Parmesan in a medium sized bag. And you're gonna staple that to your large bag above the seal because on the day that you go to cook this you're gonna sprinkle it with ah. those extra cheese stuff before you go to bake it it bakes in just 20 minutes so this is right. a great one for the because busy nights everything is already cooked it's mostly it's just a reheat right you want to just get it heated through and yes it's perfect for busy nights because you take it out in the morning or you thaw it in your fridge overnight. <laughs> and then when you go to cook it, in your casserole dish, in your oven, bam, and you are going to make it to soccer practice and your kids will be fed and you haven't even had to shove granola bars in their mouths in the backseat. Exactly, exactly. Yay, yay. Exactly. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna do another soup. Of course we are, because... It's pantry clean out day. So, because pantry canned items are wet, right? Yes. So it makes sense to make the soup. And it really stretches the dollar it because you can add more liquid, whether it's broth or water, and it just mm -hmm. stretches like more. And, and an more. extra spoonful of your better than bouillon. And soups are <laughs> great for um, lunches. And so mm -hmm. whether you work from home or you work from an office and you have a microwave there or access to some kind of heat Even my device. kids, my son came home and he's like, they put a microwave upstairs, like by his locker. So now... They eat in the library sometimes. I don't know. Grade seven's a funny so place. <laughs> even if you've got, you know, you're sending your kids to school with these, again, you just do them in quart size bags. They could go in a thermos. I mean, mm -hmm. soups are great. Soups really are great. They're in, they're in every man's meal. <laughs> sure. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so this is vegetarian taco soup. It sounds like it's going to be similar to the tortilla soup, but I promise you it is different. There's no salsa in this one. It's very different, it's actually. It's very different. We start out with your kidney beans that are rinsed and drained, and then white kidney beans that are rinsed and drained. Some diced tomatoes, your kernel corn. Again, if you don't have canned corn, but you have frozen corn, that would work well. Some chopped onion, some tomato sauce, diced chilies, two tablespoons of taco seasoning, more if you're gonna have to stretch this a bit, and then one and a half cups of water. Again, because it's just the water, you can omit that for right now and just write a note on your label or on your bag that on the day of cooking, you wanna add in one and a half cups of water. So to cook this, it couldn't be easier. You are going to heat this on your stove until it's hot. That's so, it. It can go in the microwave too. It doesn't really matter how you get it hot. Just eat it hot. Because this is a taco flavor, the same rules apply of the tortilla soup where you could add a little dollop of your ice, of your ice cream, wouldn't that be weird? <laughs> of your sour cream, maybe some chopped chives and, and some hot sauce, like, yeah, you and, and your tortilla chips and a little sprinkle of your cheddar cheese. Totally make this into a little oomphier meal by adding some fixings, if that's your jam. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I wanted to give you some other ideas, because I said I would, of things that you could make if you just added a little bit of meat or added some things that might be in your freezer and recipes that we have. Um, so chicken asparagus bake, because it calls for cream of chicken soup, cream of mushroom soup, rice. Um, it has frozen asparagus. so and you can substitute broccoli for that. Mm -hmm. So that would be a good one. Um, fried rice, we were talking about that earlier, but that is really like, I always have cans of sliced water chestnuts. Right. And soy sauce, oyster sauce, like all the things. It also calls for carrots and peas and rice. So you might not have everything, but it's one that again, it's adaptable. Then there's a chickpea and vegetable curry that we have. So that's another option that you can do mm -hmm. with your chickpeas. There's a chickpea and squash fajitas recipe that we have that mm -hmm. 
You could also use chickpeas for um, chicken taco soup. We talked about that already. Chicken noodle soup casserole. Now that yeah. is a five ingredient recipe. It's got frozen peas. Um, it, it has chicken though, but it has egg noodles and mm -hmm. mushroom soup. And so um, that's something that is kind of a pantry meal if you have the chicken. Beef taco soup, very similar to our vegetarian taco soup. It's got beans and all of that, but it's got beef. So you would have to have beef to make that one. Baked beans. I mean, oh, we have- It doesn't get any more simple than that. Now our baked beans are a little bit fancy. Well, we have a Dr. Pepper baked beans, yes. which is, if really? you had Dr. Pepper, yeah. um, quite easy. It mm -hmm. does have bacon, but then our cowboy baked beans is more involved. Right. But, oh, it's, it's delicious it. and it's, it's worth, worth it. <laughs> so, but again, if you have, if you see a case lot of beans, like the, they freeze, like your baked beans, that can freeze. Absolutely. And can be a side or a main And you can dish. zip them up. You don't need to, uh, okay, at our house, comfort food, white toast with butter, baked beans with wieners cut up in it. Oh, yes, totally. I mean, that's yeah. total comfort food. But if you want to zip them up, for not your children. Yeah. <laughs> or, I don't know, have you ever made baked beans from scratch? Have you ever had baked beans made from scratch where somebody yes. had them in the, the pressure cooker or yes. did the cooking for days? Yeah. Delicious. Yeah, totally good. Yeah. And the cowboy baked beans do have beef in them. Mm -hmm. and, and bacon. bacon. <laughs> so there's, you know, so it's very hearty. It's a full meal. Are we are we making it in our mega session? Because now I'm craving it, now that we're talking about well, it. Well, I, I thought about it, we're not, but the reason is because I thought for summer, we both uh, want it for camping We both camping want it for camping, stuff. for potlucks. It's now my new potluck thing. Yes, and so I thought it would be better to make it in the summer. Yeah. But my husband is like, that's one of his new favorites. Like he's so excited so good. about that recipe. Yeah. So, and then some other ones are chili, of course. It's yeah. like you have all the cans usually for chili. You already. got a pound of ground beef, you're golden. You can even add a can of tomato, condensed tomato soup into your chili. Like, I use tomato paste, tomato sauce. Can, tomato soup can go in lots of things that you don't think of. Yeah. It really can. So we need a suggestion it. on YouTube, because we sometimes laugh about the beef, ground beef stroganoff being a bit bland looking. It's not bland in taste. No. She said, add a couple of tablespoons of tomato oh, paste I and it will that. richen the color up. It won't be so gray looking. And she said it doesn't affect and the taste. And it won't affect the taste a whole lot. So I would be willing to try it just to see. Yeah. I'm not I'm not upset about how it looks at all because I know that it just no, tastes so darn it's, good. It's just so worth it. it is. Um, and that's one where, you know, if you, like, yeah, it's not. It has some dairy in it. Yeah, like it has the sour cream and that's stuff. That's not really a pantry. And mushrooms. Yeah. So no. It has mushroom soup. But beyond, and now tomato sauce, or tomato paste. <laughs> and then one more that I thought of that'd be great for your chickpeas, which is a Moroccan chickpea stew that we have. Mm -hmm. That is so good. Like. So good. It's so good. My husband is a meat eater. We're both farm kids, meat and potatoes. And so sometimes I get a little nervous bringing home a weird, re weird, a different recipe, like a Moroccan chickpea stew, I think, is he going to eat this? Is this going to fill him up? Is it hearty enough? Are the flavors going to be too different from what he likes? And he loved it. Hands Ooh, down. It's a winner. He is like, whatever that is, make that again. Ooh. Yeah. I'm so happy. Whenever I can invent a vegetarian recipe that he will that eat. That my husband will eat. That's a winner. Like It totally is. That's awesome. Yeah. That's one of our like brand new Recipes. It's very new. Yeah. Yeah. So we, that will go into the rotation. I definitely. It's, it's already in the club. It is in the club. We we tried it and we're like, yep. Immediately, bam, yeah. into the club. It's uh, okay. So this last recipe, again, it's not really a recipe. It's you're throwing things together, but it's just a pasta bake. So I always, always, always have pasta in my pantry, um, just dried pasta. So there's a few things you can make like macaroni and cheese freezes. I don't know if you knew that, but a homemade mac and cheese, as long as you use like um, a heavy cream instead of your milk, it will work with the milk, but it might it separate, might separate. or go mealy a little bit. Yeah. It's better with the cream. So everything's better with cream. Everything's better with cream. So mac and cheese will freeze, but this is just a super simple pasta bake. I had 
a jar of pasta sauce. I, I think I had two jars of pasta sauce of lots of pasta. So all I did is look through my fridge to see what vegetables I had. We sauteed the vegetables in some butter, put those into our cooked pasta again, undercooked it slightly so that on the day that you go to cook this, like actually bake it, um, it's not gonna get mushy and all of that. So all we really did was put some veggies in there and I didn't have a lot of variety, but <laughs> I have in the past done zucchini mm -hmm. and you know red pepper, um, onion of course, um, I don't think I've ever done carrots or anything like that, but I've done spinach, like all kinds of spinach things. Spinach will go in really nicely. But yeah. I did not have a lot of options this time, so we just kind of used what I had. Um, and then you're just mixing that in with your pasta, your store-bought pasta sauce. This would be a good one that you can use the red sauce that we have in our club, but today is not about that. It's about using up what's in the pantry. That's right. And so. You mix that in there, you top it with some cheese. This one, we're making it right into a casserole dish and then covering it with foil. You could do it in an aluminum one. If you wanted to do it in a freezer bag, oh, actually, I don't even recommend that. It's gonna be giant. It will it's be too giant. Big. Do it in a foil pan. Yeah, you have to do this one in a foil pan. We don't say that often, but- We have, freezer space is a premium at our houses. We have lots of freezers, cause this is, this is like, how we eat. This is how we eat. Yeah. So we have a lot of freezers and a lot of freezer space, but when we do our mega sessions and we're doing over a hundred meals, like we divide them, but we have to fit them all. So we don't use the foil tins a lot. No. We only do it when we know that we'll make it fit somehow. Yes, and and like it, it has to it has to be worth doing it in a yeah. foil tray, right? Yeah. Or something you can't do any other way. And we have in the past tried a recipe like the pierogi casserole we did one in a bag and yeah. one in the foil tray the first time we made it to see if yeah. it would work in the bag has to be layered and that one we made it sort of work in the bag but it the was flavors good yeah the baked um Ravioli. caesar chicken oh has to go in the tray no have we moved it yes, yes. we figured out because we did one in the tray and one in the bag and we figured out that it was totally fine in the bag like no different. Ravioli and, lasagna must be layered. Yes, absolutely. Christy tried it in the bag. Oh my god! And no. it was, it was layered. actually bad. Like, yeah, it actually was bad. We don't have freezer meal fails very often, but we have pretty good eye. We know what we're doing. That was a fail. Do you know we've made over five thousand freezer meals in the last eleven plus years? Yeah. And we we did some math one day. We won't bore you with how we did that. Yeah. But it, so we feel like we are experts. We can, we can look at something and we've come to know, hey, I think this would work really well. What works and what doesn't. And this pasta bake is not going to work in a freezer bag. So there you go. You got to top it foil. with your cheese, put your foil on it. Um, if you're going to be having it in your freezer for a while, then you want to put a layer of plastic wrap before the foil that lays directly on top because again you're trying to avoid that air mm -hmm. and then you want to make a note on your label that reminds you to remove the plastic wrap so right. because that is a fail that we have had we have and it will not so we have made eight family sized meals out of what was in my pantry and what i kind of think would be in like maybe a family of four. I think, yeah, it was know, a a good pantry. sampling of what is typically in a pantry. I don't think it was outrageous at all. No, again, I could have made meals for days just on what's in my pantry. We're not like preppers. We're not like doomsday no, <laughs> preppers or anything. We just are, we are prepared. We're just, we're, we are prepared. Which is where that word comes yeah, from. Yes. So we are kind of preppers then yeah. if you want to get technical. We're just prepared and we do take advantage of those sales. We, we use the club for that kind of stuff all the time. Anybody can use the club for that. It's really, really, really worth it. Um, and good stuff in there. I think these are great meals. I, I'm excited about them and I think they're going to be a really good addition because 
there isn't a lot of meat here, so um, which some of our family is okay with and some of them are not. And so it's like we can have one of these one night and one of our regular freezer meals another night and then nobody's gonna really notice that I made a whole bunch of meatless meals. Yeah. Um, and so... And there's variety here. Oh like, yeah. Even the two, this tortilla soup and the vegetarian taco soup, sounds like they're gonna be exactly the same and they are so different. There is still a ton of variety here, so you really can't go wrong when you put a little imagination and some effort into it. And our hope with today's video was not that you would make these exact recipes because what's in your pantry is gonna be really different. And maybe you have packs of ground beef in your freezer and so you can easily make beef meals. Maybe you came across a sale on chicken and so you can easily mm -hmm. pair chicken recipes with what's in your pantry already. Like it's so easy to make marinades out of what you have in your pantry already. And that's another thing where you can go into the club and just, you know, push mm -hmm. the chicken button and populate what's there Whatever and see there. what you have. But it's not to tell you like make these exact recipes. It's kind of just to inspire you that you might have more food than you think. Yeah. And and we want you to save on your groceries. Totally. Because we, we want to save on our groceries. We just want to share with you how to do it. And we're going to put a video right there to other ways to save using freezer meals and some tips that we give you on how to save even more. And if you go into our video library, you'll find some specific budget mm -hmm. meal uh, videos where we we break it down as to like how much we spent per meal right. and some of them are like less than a dollar a serving and all of that so you can check those out we just really appreciate you spending your time with us yes i hope to see you back um next time happy cooking and happy pantry shopping